Right guys, hello, another video for you, all more fun with my new Quest 2 headset. Do a little bit of retro gaming today for fun. So in the description of the video and a pinned comment below, we'll do the timestamps I always do, as well as some useful links to help you guys out that want to do this too. Think of this more as a showcase. I'll try and talk some things through, but if you're struggling, I can do dedicated tutorial videos later. But I'm not going to make that unless there's an actual interest for it. So this video really follows on from the last one I did, which was all about Kodi, Media Center Software. One of my long-term viewers subscribed Stuart Byrne says, Hono, oh, you're just showing off. Well, maybe a little bit. In this video, I will be showing off because it's retro gaming and Cody with bells on. But because I want to do retro gaming, I need a gamepad to actually play the games. This is the first hurdle. If you don't have one, that's going to be a bit of a problem. If we do, we need to pair it to the headset. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can either do it through the Oculus app on your phone, or we can go into the settings, experimental features, sure enough there's bluetooth pairing so put your gamepad into its pairing mode and click pair eventually see it and you can get it paired to your quest so that's the first hurdle overcome the next thing for me to do is i'm going to load up Kodi. so i'm going to apps i need to go into unknown sources we'll list it a to z to help me find it so there's Kodi, which i've had to install through sidequest we cover this in the last video i'll give you a link in the description so you can get a uh, side quest and, and get these Kodi files. So we'll click on this. It's going to load up pretty quickly. So this is media center software, but I try to use it more as like a launcher or like a dashboard you'd be used to on your consoles to give me access to uh, other things that I want to do. I use Kodi on all kinds of equipment on my PC, my Shield TV, and now the Quest as well. All right, so those of you that saw the last video, I'm just going to put the touch controller down. Things look a little bit different. Uh, in the last video I used the stock user interface, the stock skin, which was actually quite easy to navigate with the touch controllers. However, I don't really like how it looks. So the first thing that you need to do, obviously it will look different for you being on the stock UI, but to go into the settings, I'm pretty sure it's a gear cog uh, on the stock user interface. So I need to go into system and input and we can see we can configure the attached controllers it knows the gamepads there but we need to do the button binds so it's going to ask you to push up down left right and push the a button b button all that stuff so once that's done it you can use your gamepad to navigate through Kodi. so we've got the interface settings and i've changed the skin to amber i like this skin i like how it's laid out it's much more intuitive and i can configure it i can change the backdrops and add things into the menu which is super super helpful so that's why things look a little bit more snazzy in this video so let's just do a quick recap uh, those of you who didn't see the last video so we've got add-ons that we can install we've got the add-on browser so we can install from a repository there's Kodi so everything in here will be perfectly legal um, got music add-ons and, and video add-ons PVR clients, I needed to do that for the HD home run to get the TV. Right, so we can come out of that. So videos, we use this to point it to our sources. So I mentioned having, uh, we'll call it NAS, Network Attached Storage. It's nothing fancy. It's just a USB hard drive plugged into my nice Asus router. On that hard drive is movies, TV shows, and music and stuff. So once I've told Cody where that is, it can then get all the metadata and the artwork, download it automatically and change how things look. So we've got more of like a Netflix experience now for me to play back my movies. There's quite a lot on here. I'm just doing the, the skip through. So that's kind of cool. And we've got the TV shows as well. So I said I've got some classic cartoons for kids to enjoy and, and parents as well for a nostalgia trip. I've got some more modern shows as well so it's always more i can put on here we've got the tv as well so some people might be wondering why i'm using Kodi over big screen that's because the big screen app as cool as it is although it could see my hd home run tuner box it couldn't actually play any of the tv channels so Kodi again has come to the rescue it's kind of cool the hd home run is connected to my router so anything that's wired into it or on wi-fi gets access to tv channels it's pretty cool to be able to sit in your garden and watch television on your phone or tablet or you know, do it in the kitchen when you're cooking. I've added in a few extra add-ons. We did show the add-on browser earlier. So I've got internet radio, which is under the music, and there's Mixcloud, which also gives me music. These are perfectly legal in that Kodi repository. So we get to RetroArch. 
So that's the point of the, the video to do some retro gaming. But let's just finish through the options. We've got Duck Hunt VR. So that's a classic NES game on SideQuest. You can play it within VR, which is actually quite cool. So just for giggles, I thought put it into the menu and um, do the back screen images. Dolphin, this is a dedicated emulator to do the GameCube. And the Wii, doing the Wii might be pushing things a little bit, but we might do that in a separate video, the dedicated emulators. So we've got favorites. I've added things in as favorites to easily add them into the menu. So I found some things didn't really like loading up like Netflix, but stuff like Duck Hunt was fine. Uh, and RetroArch obviously is fine. So it's a bit of a trial and error thing. Um, but just so you're aware, so we can search. We've got the settings and power to quit. All right, so let's do a little bit of RetroArch. We'll click on the menu item and it will load up. So the first thing I want to point out is it still thinks it's Cody at the bottom uh, and the window is stayed enlarged. Had I quit out of Cody and then opened RetroArch through the app, then we'd have a smaller window again. So that's actually kind of cool. It saved me some faffing around. When you guys install RetroArch, it is going to look a little bit different. I've obviously done a little bit of tweaking, but in a nutshell, you're going to want to go into the online updater. It's telling me it's found the gamepad. Uh, so you're going to want to update core info files, all of this update stuff, do that. Do the updates. Then you can head into the core downloader and you can think of these cores as emulators, software to emulate the systems we want to do. So we'll just quickly go through this. Got the Amstrad CPC. That was the first computer I ever owned. I must have been about five years old. It ran off cassette tapes, believe it or not. Some of you might not even know what they are. So you might not care about the Amstrad CPC, but I do. I might want to put a few games on there. Got Final Burn Alpha. So that's Capcom Play System. These are basically arcade systems. And then we've got MAME, Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. So yeah, more arcade stuff. Uh, this is a 64-bit build. It's finally got MAME 2010. For a long time, that was missing. So we'd have to use the 32-bit version. But it looks like the 64-bit version's um, coming into order now. So that's good. Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, the Jaguar, uh, the Lynx, Atari ST, the Wonder Swan. So we've got the Commodore Amiga there. I've installed that core because I love the Amiga. Show that off a little bit later. More Commodore stuff to C64. You'll see that you've got one system, but it can sometimes have uh, different cores. So some lean more towards accuracy, others towards performance. People can argue over which one's better than the next. Oh, I'm not getting drawn into that argument. So we've got Doom there. We could do Doom, but on SideQuest, there is the VR port of it where you can actually be in the game, play it in VR. So that's obviously a much better option than playing it flat screen. But if you want to do do it flat screen that's an option for retroarch we've got disk operating systems to do old school pc games it just keeps going and going and going doesn't it magnavox odyssey the intellivision msx uh you know, the sg1000 that's a sega so nec pc engine or the cd version of it super graphics uh pc 98 pretty sure they're they're jap spec old school pcs Nintendo DS, Game Boy and Color. Again, we've got a few options. I think Gambat is what most people use uh, for the Game Boy and the Color, but there's other options there. We've got the Game Boy Advanced. So because we're on the 64-bit build, we've got access to the to the Dolphin core. So we could give that a go. Of course, we did mention there is a dedicated emulator as well. We just have to experiment, see which one is better. We've got the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Nintendo 64, uh, Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom, which is the Jap spec version of it. The Virtual Boy. Again, I'll point out on SideQuest, there is um, a dedicated emulator for the Quest to... The Virtual Boy is basically a virtual VR headset uh, from back in the day. So we can actually play it as it was meant to be played rather than do it flat screen. So might not want to bother with that in RetroArch. So we've got Quake, which I'm sure also has a uh, VR port in SideQuest. So again... We'd want to do that. We don't really want to do it in RetroArch. See, Quake 2 is catered to, as well as the expansions. Scum VM, classic point-and-click adventure games from back in the day on PC and stuff like that. They're very cool. Full Throttle, Sam and Max, Day of the Tentacle, that kind of stuff. It holds up very well today, to be fair. So we've got Sega Dreamcast. Uh, so they were obviously at home. The Naomi was the arcade version of it. But this also do Sammy and Thomas Wave. They're also arcade games as well. So that's actually a really, really cool core. I might load that up later to explain about BIOS files and uh, info on the cores. But yeah, that's, that's a really good core. 
So we've got the Game Gear, Master System, Mega Drive, Mega CD, 32X. So, okay, for my American cousins will know it's the Genesis and the Sega CD, but you know what I mean. Uh, so we've got a few options there. We've got the Sega Saturn, X68000 or the X1. Pretty sure they're old Jap spec PCs. Sinclair ZX81 and the Spectrum, Neo Geo CD, Pocket, Pocket Color. PlayStation, so I've done Duck Station, I only find that on the 64-bit build of RetroArch, so that's supposed to be pretty good, we'll use that over Rearms. So I've got the Panasonic 3DO, uh, Port Tomb Raider, we've got Wolfenstein as well. So there you go, quite a lot we can do, provided you've got the game files. So what we'll do, we'll go back, and I'm going to load up a core. So I said, these are the ones I've got installed. So we'll do... Dreamcast, the Flycast, and I'm going to go down to information because some of you will be new to RetroArch, you don't understand how it works. So let's go into core information. So it's telling me what the core is called, Flycast. It's telling me what system it's for, the Dreamcast. And we can see the supported extensions are game files, what they end as. Some people might have zip files, so we, we can check that does zip. It does CHD, they're compressed disk images, so sometimes a disk would have two files, it would be a bin and a queue. Uh, the queue is like the um, the playlist sheet, says what all the bin files are to, to load them up. We've got CDI files, all of this stuff, we can just check that the games we have match up here so it will play. So it says firmware, which is the BIOS files. So it's telling me that a lot of this stuff is optional, you don't need to have it, but if you do have it, it makes things a little bit better. So it's say it's present, I've got it. It's dc forward slash dc underscore boot dot bin. So what I did, uh, use side quest to create folders on the quest two. I uh, created one that's called ROMs. Within there, there's a folder called BIOS, and that's where I put these BIOS files. So within that BIOS folder is another folder called dc for me to put that uh, BIOS into. And it's seen it, so we know we're good. So we can see these MD5, it's a, it's a checksum. So you can go to websites, MD5 checkers. So you can put your file in there and then it will give you this string of letters and numbers to know that like the file that you have matches what they want it to be. Um, if that sounds confusing, Google it. It's, it's really not too bad. So we can back up the core, restore, delete the core, delete the backups and so on. So yeah, I know I'm good for the Dreamcast. So we can start scrolling across so I've changed the gone into input set up some shortcuts I can push start and select uh, to bring up the menu when I'm in a game I can hold down the left trigger and click in the right thumbstick to just quit RetroArch completely and that'll take me back to Kodi uh, we've got configurations the user interface I've changed that around changed the color of it changed what the backdrop is you can change what the icons are uh, go down to Pretty sure it's directory. So it's saying the system BIOS. You can see that I've changed that. It's storage emulated zero ROMs and I've pointed it to the BIOS folder uh, and that's where it's going to look to get all the BIOS files. Rather than me having to put stuff into the RetroArch folder, it's just easier to tell RetroArch where those files are. Right, so as we go across, we've got the option to scan directories, either automatically or do a manual scan. So let's just do a manual scan so I can talk things through. So we select the content directory. So I'm going to go storage emulated zero. So this is the folders on my Quest headset. So I go down to my ROMs folder. So we can see there's the Amiga. There are the Amiga games. There's that BIOS folder, which contains all the BIOS files, Capcom Play System, Dreamcast. GameCube, Mega Drive, Mega CD, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, SNES. Obviously it's down to you, the stuff that you put on there. Uh, this is why I got the 256 gig model of the Quest, because I knew I wanted to do retro gaming, I knew I wanted to do the side quest ports, and obviously the Quest games as well. So pick a folder, like the Amiga, and then you can tell it, when you're doing a manual scan, what it is. So we could say, yeah, it's a Commodore Amiga. And then you can specify which core you want to use. So that would be the Commodore Amiga PUAE. You can say the file extension. So the reason you do that, 
is if it is a CD based system, you can have bin and Q files. Now the Q files is what's going to load the game really. So you can just come in here and then just put in Q and it'll only scan the Q files. Otherwise you're going to have all the bin files included, see, have them seen as games when they're really, really not. So that's a useful thing to be able to do when you manually scan. So yeah, you can start the scan and then it essentially creates uh, playlists for these systems. So we can see the icons for the game controllers. So this is the Amiga. You can see it's a, like a keyboard. That's what the, the machine looked like. So let's go down Got Batman the movie there. So we'll run it up. Unfortunately, you're not going to get the audio. I can hear it through my headphones, um, but you can't. I think it's to do with copy protection when we're casting. Uh, Oculus don't want us to do it. Bit of a shame, but oh well. I'll just have to talk over it. So yeah, the Amiga was a classic computer has keyboard built in and had a mouse. A lot of the games want to take advantage of that, but many of them would play with a joystick. So Batman is one of them. I know which games I can pick, which I can just enjoy with the gamepad. There was many other cool games as well, like Walker, where you're basically like an Ed 209 from Robocop, and you'd use the joystick to move, but use the mouse to aim around the screen, which was pretty cool. We used to play that with my brother. He'd steer and I'd shoot. we sort of take turns swapping. Um, as we went through the levels. Oh, hit by a grenade. So yeah, this is pretty sure the first game I played on the Amiga. It came bundled with it along with the F-18 flight simulator. So as you wonder why I'm into flight simulators on VR, it's because I uh, started at a very, very early age. Must have been about 10, 11, something like that. Right. Used the rope get hit in the head with a grenade this guy's going to come back took him out so you get the idea so i'm going to use those shortcuts start and select together to bring up the menu it's going to let me save my game uh, we can rewind if we make a mistake um, tinker with the controls swap discs if you're doing like uh, metal gear solid on playstation one you can swap over the disc uh, so yeah useful to be able to get in here We'll just close the content down so we can move on to the next system, which is the Nintendo 64. So the cool thing about a lot of the retro games is they don't really take up that much space. So I could fit a lot of them on. I could put on every single Super Nintendo game, every single NES game. The downside is you need to scroll through all of the games. So there is a search function, but I mean, really, I'd just sort of try to be sensible and just pick your favorites, do 20, so anything up to 50 games. Uh, per system to make things easier to navigate. So let's do Star Fox 64. So you see this is loading up fine. Again, I'm getting the audio, but you're not. Bit of a shame. What I will mention is that I changed the head strap for the Quest 2. So I've got the HTC Vive Deluxe audio strap, which not only makes it more comfortable to wear the Quest 2, but it also has much better audio. There's headphones built into it that can go over my ears far, far better than what the Quest throws out. So uh, yeah, I don't regret buying it. When you look how much the Oculus Elite strap costs, I think that's about £60. I paid £80 uh, on a Black Friday offer for the for the Vive DAS. So I think that was well worth it. I did have to buy an adapter to get it to fit the Quest, so it was a little bit more money. Um, but yeah, certainly more comfortable. And with the audio upgrade as well, I think it was, I think it was worthwhile doing. Can we see this plays? I am actually getting the commentary for the, the text coming up on the screen. And let me skip. Is it going to let me skip this? No. I really enjoy it on the uh, on the Wii U. To be honest, you've got the tilt controls, Star Fox. It's pretty awesome. Seems to be playing pretty well to me. We'll just come out. We don't want the video to go on for a month for Sundays. So we've got the NES. Let's do some Mario stuff, shall we? There's Duck Hunt. I mentioned we've got the VR port of that. So there's Super Mario Brothers. Let's give that a go. The one player game. Check what the buttons are. One of these will be for run. 
Where's that mushroom going? So, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't really a Nintendo fan back in the day. I was a Sega boy, that's what I owned. My cousins had the Nintendo stuff, like the NES and the SNES. So, when we visited them, we played the games, when they visited us, vice versa. They'd play the Sega stuff, but obviously later in life, I did get some Nintendo stuff. One of my ex-girlfriends was a big fan of the Wii. Of course, she did the blag of it was for the Wii Fit, but it was just to play games. To come out the out the pipe. So when it comes to retro gaming, people get really hung up on the on the lag and the latency. Uh, remember, I'm casting, so things look a little bit um, slow or or delayed. Casting could have uh, a lot to do with that. It's actually quite playable within the headset itself. So we can close the content and move on from the NES. To the snares to put some you know, common favorite games in here got more star fox let's do mario all stars it's like a, a collection of some of the favorite games and do mario 3 so we see we've got a choice there let's do mario 3 Raise the curtain. Mario start, right. So I know um, people have their Nintendo Switches that, that can do emulation now. But from what I'm hearing, like I think it can do the N64, but it doesn't play very well. Uh, Nintendo kind of dropped the ball, but we've been able to do this emulation for like years. Uh, they're really behind the curve. Obviously, people have kids and you know they've played the newer Mario games, but they won't be aware of the retro stuff. Like this is all this will be new and exciting to them. Oh, that's it. Oh no, you miss all the coins. Well done. Take that extra life. Locks out the way. Nearly at the end of the level now. Grab the star. Course clear. You got a card. Right, so we can close that down. We've looked at the snares. So we've got Virtual Boy there. I'm not going to load this up, otherwise the video goes on too long. But I mentioned there is the dedicated emulator for us to really enjoy it, how it should be done. That was a VR headset back in the day. And we now have really nice VR headsets, so uh, we'll do that in a separate video, the dedicated emulators. That brings us on to the Dreamcast. Uh, so keep in mind these are discs, it's going to use up quite a lot of space, the more of these you have on. So again, you know, choose wisely, depending on what your headset is, how much space you have. I suppose you could always plug in a, like a USB memory stick into the port on the side of the Quest, if you wanted to do that. I haven't tried it, but there's no reason that shouldn't work. Alright, so Jap spec game, everything's going to be in Jap. Although the Japanese love to have English spoken in their games or written for some reason. Crazy guys, love them to bits. They do some awesome stuff. Alright, so it's going to tell me accept, normal game. So this style of game is often called shmups, shoot em ups. You think of shoot em ups being a first person shooter, but they're not. They're like these uh, top down scrolling games. So yeah, I'm just blasting stuff. But to make it a little bit more interesting, we've got like the light and the dark side. If I'm black, none of this black stuff can hurt me, but the white will. And vice versa, I can flip around to the white. So you can see I'm building up a chain, building up that meter. Once that's full, I have my special attack pretty much blast everything on the screen. So I'll do my best to try and fill that up. Absorb these shots, that will build up the meter as well. There's the special attack, everything's gone. It's a quite a cool game, I enjoy that. Let's move on to the Mega Drive. So we've got Desert Strike there. 
we'll just do this one because I really loved the game back in the day but also mention uh, we've got the Apache gunship coming to DCS World soon I love doing flight simulators in VR uh, that's supposed to come out in December they delayed it till January and the reason for that is they've got like an AI pilot or co-pilot depending on what you want to do in the gunship so yeah I'm fine for them to delay it uh, if it's going to mean a, a better release so off the boat we get clear the weapons are armed as we head in lands there's a little forward base we can pick up some ammo and fuel when we need it head in lands take out the AA so yeah data game but it is it is making me smile to play it again massive screen in front of me with the virtual screen in VR it's pretty awesome look for downed pilots that might need saving Hydra rockets there yeah so you get the idea there was urban strike and nuclear strike all kinds of uh, sequels to desert strike very popular game back in the day so we close down the mega drive which brings us on to the mega cd or the sega cd so let's let's open up cobra command and we'll do i don't think it's pika drive it's genesis plus we want so i loved the mega cd back in the day but back then we used to have the big box crt televisions uh, so a lot of these games it would be full motion videos like an interactive movie so the, the graphics looked amazing especially on the television compared to what games would do but they have not aged well uh, with our more modern televisions it's just more of a pixelated mess uh, it's warning me the headset power is low so we better better get on with it so maybe Cobra Command won't be as bad because it's more animated than being actual uh, video see how it pans out yeah it doesn't look great so we're just waiting for the stuff to come and view the shoot so we've got push up over the Statue of Liberty looking for the boxes to shoot you get the idea All right we're on borrow time now so we've got the PlayStation. Let's load this up quickly. So I've got Metal Gear Solid there. Uh, have we got Metal Slug? Yeah, I think this was a bad choice because it does take a little while to load and I'm low on battery, but we'll see how we go. So Metal Slug, I love it. It's You can get it on other systems as well, like the Neo Geo and the Atomis Wave, the Flycast, the Dreamcast Core can do Atomis Wave as well. I really, really like these games. I think it was Metal Slug 6, it's the second or third level is zombie inspired. Those of you that watch my channel know I quite enjoy zombie stuff. But yeah, it was ported to all kinds of, of other systems as well. It's on the PlayStation. Still loading. So again, this being a CD based system, I wouldn't really want Metal Slug as the CD game. I, if it's going to be a smaller file on the Neo Geo, I'd just do the Neo Geo. So pick Eri. It's a couple of seconds for the level to load and then she'll parachute in. There we go. So I've got a shoot button, I've got a jump button and we have grenades to throw as well. I need to save these POWs They'll give me upgrades. Get nice and close, we'll stab him. There we go. Have some grenades. Try and shoot these bombs before they hit me. There's the chopper dead. Give me some bonus points. More frags for the mini boss. Refill the ammo. Yeah, so you get the idea. Remember, we're getting low on battery. We'll close the content down. 
So yeah, I could add in more systems, provided I've installed the cores and I've got the game files. So we can go all the way back to the start. There is the option for me to quit Re RetroArch, but under the input settings, I created a hotkey, which is the left trigger, and then I picked a button to quit RetroArch. So when I hold left trigger and click in the right thumbstick, that will quit and takes me back to Kodi. So I think we'll leave it there. I said we'll do the uh, dedicated emulators in a separate video. So have a great day, guys. Have a great evening, whatever it is you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.